Okay, so today uh, we're going to take a look at web services overview and then we'll also look at some of the common protocols, uh, what HTTP, XML, JSON are, uh, the definition of what an API is, as well as REST and SOAP. So taking a look at our uh, diagram from the last lecture, we basically have the end user over here with the browser, our web server, the application server, the database server, and then the database itself. Again, we've kind of covered databases pretty well. You know that we query into databases uh, using the SQL language. We can do inserts, deletes, modify the database. Uh, the database will be hosted on a database server. Uh, and so now today what we're going to be taking a look at is the web server and application server. So we have the API, uh, Java REST SOAP, and then uh, the TCP. TCP IP, which we won't get too much into that, but that's more the low-level protocol that your computer works on, and then the HTTP, which is how it makes requests to the servers. Okay, so how do we pass a message and request from one layer to another? We do it through protocols, uh, internet protocols in particular. So what happens whenever you type a URL into a browser? and press enter. Uh, and what happens whenever you click on a hyperlink? Basically, we have over here the uh, web client. It's based on a client server model, so the web client will make a request to the server and for a resource, and the resource will be served back to the client. So looking at a little more detail, we can see here we have our browsers, we have a few command line tools, you can use curl and telnet, uh, to do get request and put uh, put request, um, but the browser is generally the way that most of us access the web. And then we have our web server. Uh, web and application server a lot of times are combined into one thing. Uh, here we have web resources. So this is an HTML uh, page, PDF, JSON, uh, XML, and so it can either be a static or dynamic. Uh, content that sets on your application server. Uh, static means it doesn't change and uh, dynamic is generated on the fly. So something that would be uh, dynamic is uh, like Google Docs, whereas static would be uh, a normal website that you would visit that doesn't have too much uh, as far as an application interface. So something like NewYorkTimes.com. Okay, and each web resource also has a URI, which is a uniform resource identifier. Um, and those are actually broken down into URN and URL. Now, URL is what we basically use for everything. Uh, that is uniform resource locator and then uniform resource name. Um, so names can actually overlap, but the URL is almost certainly the thing that you use to access websites. That's how we use the HTTP and HTTPS protocols. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, uh, but a URI encompasses both of those. So whenever we refer to a URL, we are referring to the URI. Okay, let's take a, a quick look at HTTP. We'll dig a little bit deeper into this in the demo. So HTTP, uh, it's a request and response protocol. It is stateless meaning that the state of the server or the state of the client doesn't need to be known. Uh, the client submits a request, HTTP responds with the requested resource and a return code. Uh, resources may be static or dynamic uh, and resources may direct uh, and resources, excuse me, and resources may redirect or include other resources. Uh, and then the HTTPS methods, we have get, post, put, delete. So get retrieves a, a URI, a post submits a resource to the URI. So this would be like sending in a form or something along those lines. Uh, put so stores a resource under the URI and delete deletes the URI. So here's some common HTTP return codes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen one of these two, forbidden or not found, uh, and then bad request as well. So uh, 200 OK, you generally don't see that one because the page has been served up, but if you were to go in and look at the request, this is what it would have been sent back. Uh, you have redirect, 
bad request, unauthorized, and server error. So the way that we pass data uh, to and from a web server, there's basically two types that we kind of use today, and that's uh, XML, which is extensible markup language, or JSON. And this is essentially what these are, standards for formatting that data. And so X, uh, XML extensible markup language, it's a tag-based language, uh, much like XML. The tags are user identified. Uh, we'll see what that means in a moment. XML is human readable and machine readable uh, and tags describe the data. So XML tags do not display uh, the data like HTML tags do. Okay, so here's a common XML file that one might find. Uh, first we have the tag that contains all the other tags and that's the uh, bookstore. And then going down one layer we have the books. Notice it's books here. This is actually a type identifier or an ID. And we can ID it as cooking, children, web, uh, web with another one and these are user defined so we're able to define those based on what we need them to state uh, and then again more tags that state more information and again this just basically is a way for us to represent data uh, and send it across the web so now we'll look at retrieving the data from an XML document uh, you can actually run this in your HTML web page uh, between some script tags and so the XML doc, that's going to be the object uh, that was created by the parser, this guy. And then basically it's going to say get elements by tag name. And so our tag name is actually any one of the tags, the leading on, uh, leading, excuse me, the text inside the tag itself. And so here we say give me title. And so it's going to find a title. And return that and it's on the first one so it will be this title so everyday Indian oh and then uh, we have child nodes and zero which will actually be the text node you can't see that and then the node value so what that's saying is this right here so this will be the text node and then return that value back and so we would get everyday Indian out of this query so JSON is a little bit different. It also is a way to transmit data across the web. Uh, it represents data in a key value pair format. Many folks think that JSON is easier to use than XML. Uh, it's more compact than XML. XML files can get fairly large fairly quickly. Uh, and like XML, JSON is easy for both humans and computers to understand. So here's a comparison of the same uh, object one in a JSON file and one in XML. Both of these are readable by a human, but personally, I guess it's a subjective thing, but personally JSON does seem a little bit cleaner. So here's kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. JSON is like XML because both JSON and XML are self-describing, human readable. Uh, both JSON and XML are higher article, uh, higher article, <laughs> values within values. Uh, both JSON and XML can be parsed and used by lots of programming languages, and both JSON and XML can be fetched um, with an XML HTTP request. <clears throat> JSON is unlike XML uh, because JSON doesn't use n tag, uh, JSON is shorter, JSON is quicker to read and write, and JSON can use arrays. Okay, a quick note for AJAX applications, JSON is faster and easier than XML. Um, using XML, you have to fetch an XML document, use the XML DOM to loop through the document and extract the values and store them in variables. Uh, using JSON with AJAX, you fetch a JSON string, json.parse that JSON string. Okay, so what is AJAX? AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, AJAX is a technique for creating better, faster, and more interactive web applications with the help of XML, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, AJ AJAX uses XHTML for content, CSS for presentation, along with uh, document object model or DOM, and JavaScript for dynamic content display. Um, and here's an example that you can take a look at. The better way to think about AJAX is it's a way this is a simplified version, but one way to think of it is, is that it is a way 
to refresh pages. That's the asynchronous part without actually refreshing pages. Uh, I'll link a video on Moodle and it does a really good job of explaining exactly what Ajax is and why it's so powerful. So here we have kind of the development of the web, the early web, uh, like 1989. Uh, we had hypertext and hyperlinks and it was just page by page. Then in 2004, Ajax was developed. Uh, the web page stays in place and parts of the web page are updated. So this is that asynchronous part I was talking about. We don't just refresh the whole page as one link. We were actually able to update different elements within the page itself. Okay, now we'll take a look at web services and the client server model and exactly uh, how we have a conversation over the web. So if you want to use a web service, you must use an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. Uh, this defines everything you need to know to talk to a web service. Basically the message format, again we've talked about XML JSON, we'll talk about SOAP a little later. Uh, the request syntax, URI, parameters and data types. Um, actions on the server as far as name methods, uh, HTTP verbs, that's like your get, uh, things along those lines. Security, authentication, uh, and then response format, so how are we going to return the messages? Again, uh, we'll take a look at those. And I guess the main thing to really note here is that the web service hides its complexity behind the API. So again, like I said, the web service hides its complexity behind the API. Essentially, your API sits right here and right here. You note, um, we can have different types of uh, code running on the server and the client and different types of interfaces between those things. All of them very complex and different. But as long as we agree on how we're going to communicate, the API can allow us to request messages and respond with messages. All right, let's take a look at REST or representative state transfer. So REST is an architectural style. Um, here we got an example of modern architectural style and colonial architectural style. So these are two different styles. Um, they are not the same as the house. Uh, so the architectural style is an abstract concept. It defines the characteristics and features you would find in a house built according to that style. Uh, REST is an abstract concept that defines the characteristic and features you would find in a web service request built according to the REST style. So everything in REST is considered as a resource. Every resource is identified by URI um, and then it uses uniform interface and these resources are handled using post, get, put, and delete operations or HTTP operations. Uh, it's a stateless uh, protocol. Every request is an independent request. Each request from the client to the server must contain all the information necessary to understand the request. So this isn't going to be a state dependent system. So now we have the web services. Uh, RESTful web services are based on HTTP methods and a RESTful web service typically defines the base URI for the services. So characteristics of the request response following the REST protocol. So the resources follow these rules. Uh, the URI identifies the resource being requested. Uh, we have the uni uniform interface methods, so get, put, post, we all agree on which methods we're using. Uh, uniform interface representation, so the way we transmit data is uniform or agreed upon. And then the protocols offer uh, features such as client server, like HTTP, stateless, where each request is independent, it's layered and may pass through intermediaries, any intermediaries and cacheable. Intermediaries may cache uh, for performance. So here we have uh, basically uh, a request we would send to the origin server and then that would be passed back to the user agent and along the way these uh, the response could be cached such that if I wound up hitting the refresh page and there was nothing actually to refresh I would hit my proxies and they would return that or even inside the local machine um, back to the web browser. So the advantages of uh, the request response following the REST protocol, we have efficiency through caching and compression, uh, scalability, gateways distribute traffic, again caching and uh, statelessness allows different intermediaries. 
um, user perceived performance, so code on demand, client validation, uh, caching, and simplicity. Okay, so let's take a look at SOAP or the Simple Object Access Protocol. Now, SOAP, uh, SOAP's name may be a little misleading. It's actually a little more complex than REST. Um, so here we have a side-by-side. -side. I've gone over REST pretty good. You can check it out against SOAP, but I'll hit some of the key points of SOAP. So again, I think one of the bigger points is REST is an architectural style. I think I may have said it was a protocol uh, earlier in the video on accident, um, but it's an architectural style and SOAP is an actual protocol, so with a defined standard. Um, it, so it uses a SOAP envelope, then HTTP or FTP uh, to transfer the data. Um, it supports only the XML format, whereas REST supports many. Uh, it has slower performance, scalability is limited and complex, and caching is not possible. Um, and REST is actually being uh, eating up a lot of the market. I think we're up to about 70% of APIs out there that are public-facing APIs, or 70% of the market are REST. Um, and SOAP's still around, and it's been around for a while, so that's one reason that people still depend on it, but um, it is slowly losing ground. Uh, and so one of the biggest advantages would be that it can be used where REST is not possible. So here's that uh, diagram. So the WSDL uh, is an XML document that defines a uh, contract between client and server and is a static by nature. Uh, and so SOAP is actually built on top of this XML based protocol uh, and on top of HTTP or some other protocol according to the rules described in the WSDL uh, for that web service. So here's essentially an HTTPS or an HTTP, excuse me, a SOAP message. Um, and a SOAP message is an XML document containing the following elements. We have the envelope, the header, the body, and the fault. And so the uh, envelope is essentially what actually contains the whole message. Uh, the body is the element that contains the call and response information, and fault uh, is what contains some of the error and status information. Now the header is actually what allows us to transport this uh, envelope across uh, the web. And so SOAP handlers uh, are pluggable classes that can be associated with a web server or, or web service or web service client to provide post-processing or pre-processing of the XML message. Um, so essentially you pass it, the service endpoint would pass it through the handler and then it would go out and then again coming back. So here's basically a whole cycle. Client makes a request, passes through the two handlers <clears throat> and then into a third and then passes back. And each of these can do different things. And so uh, in demo we're going to take a, a look at um, API and probably focus a little more on RESTful during demo, but we'll check that out later.